and I'll put in there. But because I'm a Kingston business, uh, I'm not necessarily downtown. They've been incredible in supporting that. Nice. So that's huge. Yeah. All right, here we go. Ten seconds. <clears throat> yeah, the same, right? <laughs> last looks, everyone. Last looks. Two, one. Hello, fellow citizens of the YouTube. Uh, welcome to whatever this is called. I don't know what to call it. My name is Tom Britton. I'm a performer here in Chicago. I do Freak Show and Tell. I do Danger Circus. I do The Seance. And I do a series of shows in how to help you market that my friend William Rader from wellattended.com helps promote. Hello, William. Uh, this time I've got uh, David Johnson from the Kingston Magic Theater. David Johnson is himself a performer, but also is a, a proprietor of a venue, manager of a venue in Kingston. Uh, thanks so much for coming, first of all. I appreciate it. I hope you were talking to the audience because there's no need to thank me for being here, Tom. Oh, thank you. Yeah. I really appreciate it. And then if you would, okay, so magician, uh, performer, theater owner, operator, what other background will people need to do to understand what we're going to talk about today? No, I, I think that's pretty much it. But in addition to that, the most important thing to keep in mind is that I'm a husband first, I'm a father second, uh, you know, a business owner, a magician, and, uh, and a very proud soldier. So the hat, the hat is full. Yeah, yeah, you're a very busy guy. Uh, very so busy what we're going to talk about today is um, the general steps on how to get you, the person listening or watching, hi, uh, how do you get booked in a theater? I was at one time a theater owner, and I've been a theater manager before, and I work predominantly in theaters. So between the two of us, we know a lot of random stuff about, well, how do you get the job? Once you've got the job, how do you help? So say it's David. I go to perform in David's Theater. We are now partners in putting butts in seats. How do I provide the stuff to theater owners? You hear from both perspectives, right? Um, and then uh, David wanted to talk about specifically that continuing relationship. So I did the show last year. Hey, how about this fall, some freak show and tell in Kingston? How about next Christmas, some, you know, the seance in Kingston? Maintaining that relationship because we all know this library performers, birthday performers, trade shows, conventions, getting the job the first time is actually the hardest. If you don't mess it up, getting it the next 12, 15 years can be the easy money coming in. Um, I want to start, if you don't mind, David, walk us through, uh, first of all, how you get from a muggle to a wizard and then wizard to owner of the cathedral. Yeah, I, I certainly think that I'm still a muggle. But the idea is that I had I had an idea on what I wanted to share. And the truth is, when I, I, I accidentally fell into the owning the theater or presenting it as a theater because I wanted to create an atmosphere for my guests in a show that I wanted to present. I wanted to be able to curse only because I wanted to be able to express who I am to the people that are in the audience. When I think about presenting magic and what it means to me to give to my audiences, it is not a character, it's an extension of who I am. So truthfully, uh, I was walking in downtown Belleville, a uh, small community about uh, 75 kilometers west of here, closer to Toronto, and there were downtown. In every city, whether it's in Canada, the United States, there are absolutely gorgeous venues that are available, that are empty. And here I am peering through windows, looking for this ultimate space where I can show, showcase the show that I wanted. So because I wanted to control that environment, I knew that it was naturally the next step to go from uh, performing for big corporations in rooms of 300 people uh, to finding that venue where I could intimately engage with 60 people or less. That's a good point. So so you're kind of approaching magic as if you were a stand-up comedian. So, you, you know, you have to work a circuit. You have to be G-rated or PG-rated. But if you're, you know, Richard Pryor or, or George Carlin in the 50s and 60s, you got to find the jazz rooms, man, because you can't talk about smoke and reefer or, you know, the Kennedy assassination or if you got the Lenny Bruce thing. Um, and I think we're both kind of coming from a this is a big argument I make for performing in theater. So those of you who are out there listening to this and you don't perform in theaters currently and you're in vaudeville, it can be hard for us. We're not taken seriously. Uh, and some of us are clowns. We shouldn't be taken seriously, but the art form should be. Um, two arguments I make is well, one, what you're talking about. I can do whatever the heck I want on stage, man, within reason. I mean, nudity is permissible. Hair does it on Broadway. 
uh, but within local laws, I can be quite loose on stage. You can't smoke in a building here in Chicago, but I can smoke on the stage if I want to. I, I, you can't curse in the library here in Chicago, but you can curse on the stage, et cetera, et cetera. The other argument I make for performing in a theater that might appeal to those of you who, unlike David and I, are not yet turned to the dark side of the theater. Um, how do you know you're good? I didn't come here to see you, man. I came to Six Flags. You walked up with a deck of cards. I came to eat pizza. You walked up to my table with a deck of cards. I came to a trade show. You're just standing in a booth, man. How do you actually know you're worth the crap? Because I saw your name or something like it. I paid 25 bucks and I'm sitting in this seat to watch you. Now, you may not be famous. I'm not. But they no. came to see the freak show and tell. They came to see my show or something like me. Something like you. I went to see the magic show when I was on vacation in Kingston. But at least you know when you get those reviews, when the people walk out of the room gives you confidence when you're like, nah, man, I'm not here because one person in the room likes me. I'm here because every everybody. night I got to impress. I mean, like you get the one star on occasion. Sure. You know, you're not going to please everybody all the time. It's a big ego trip when you're like, man, 300 people. Even if they paid five bucks, they paid five bucks to see me. me. That's right. I'm yeah, nobody. absolutely. Yeah, nobody. You're right. And I think moving from that, uh, moving from that one hire that we talked about earlier, where you, you're paid to go in and perform for a thousand people who didn't invite you uh, to going to a room of 100 or 300 people where each and every one of those have invested in you and their time with you, that's, there, there's, nothing, there's nothing else like it. Uh, and and you, you, you talk about smoke and reefer. And uh, a, a very classic effect in magic is the sponge balls. And some guys will laugh at that, uh, especially, um, anyhow, I'm not going to go there. But <laughs> I... I <laughs> I actually tell this story on how I got involved in magic and it just so happens that it was my pot dealer. And it's a true story. It's a true story. Um, That's almost I mean, a cheat no code doing magic for someone who's high. That's almost just like, <laughs> like, whoa. It's like you're their uncle now. It's behind your ear, bro. No matter how much I paid him, he wouldn't reveal the secret. So I took it upon myself to buy the book. Yeah. That's cool. I, 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 yeah. I like a, I like a weed dealing magician with a moral code. That's awesome. That's it, man. That yeah, cool. it was it was great, and it's legal in Canada. Uh, as I it must is say, in Chicago, uh, as I, of January. Let, let me make one thing clear. Um, since my wife and I found out we were pregnant uh, eleven years ago, I've been sober. Uh, a very proud Canadian soldier. Uh, but my wife is still a junkie. Sure. No, I'm kidding. I'm kidding. I'm kidding. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Okay, so you're you you now have a target in mind. You know that to do the show that is you on stage, to be the most you as an artist, because what you're doing now is you're not looking for commerce, you're looking for art. You've got commerce. You've got the big corporate gigs. You can do uh, sponge bunnies. Forgive me, I'm not a magician. Sponge bunnies and a uh, pick a card or whatever. But you need to express yourself. So now you're looking in the windows of all these great venues. How do you choose the one, and then how do you build towards that? So there were a couple of things that I had to take into consideration, uh, especially with the, the legal side of it. So you've got to look for permits, you've got to look yeah. for insurances, because this is ultimately a business. And we don't have the time to go into that. But I, I always start with the end goal in mind. And the intention for me is to present an experience. And that means that I want the customer or the client, the audience member, my friend, to be able to to come in and have a good time and enjoy a drink. So I'm looking for a place that has a bar or at least can provide a bar service. Uh, so once you find the venue that is uh, ultimately the place that's going to create the atmosphere that you want to, to give, that, that space that you want to share in, uh, it's, it's very important to make sure that uh, all of those additional things are in, in mind. I mean, from the business owner side of things, you've got to be concerned about transportation and parking. Um, is the place wheelchair accessible? So the, the place I landed on is kind of a great story. I'm in a historic, um, it's, it's, uh, it's a historic barn, to be honest with you. It was a horse stable at one time, and it's the Coach House Pub. Yes, it's very cool. So 1821, the, uh, the, the, the estate was actually built, and it was purchased by the local university. And they've since uh, turned it into a uh, hotel and conference center, and they've built, you know, 80, 80 corporate rooms, or correction, 80 suites on it, and they have big convention rooms. But in the back, is this most amazing barn. It's limestone walls with hand-hewn beans in the ceiling, and it's just stunning. 
and it's top shelf. And the perfect liquor- for vaudeville because we're considered kind of an old school. You know, when people say magician, they do picture a top hat tail. You say sideshow, fire performer, juggler, you know, all that acrobat. We are considered already kind of, you know, the vaudeville era of the 1890s, 1930s. So you fit better than most. You know, a stand-up comedy show would feel anachronistic in there. It, it may. Yeah. You're, you're absolutely right. Yeah. So, I mean, when I when I look at not only the uh, the appearance of the place and creating that atmosphere, I wanted the amenities. I wanted my I wanted my audiences to be able to to order a drink before and during the intermission and stick around for for a few minutes afterwards, whether we just chat or whether they finish up beer. Uh, I wanted that space for them. Gotcha. So, OK, I want to I want to ask a, a pointed question. because I want to lead you down a path. So forgive me for this. Uh, I'm going to lead the witness, Your Honor, uh, for the folks who are, who are watching us right now who want to know how to break into this market. So specifically with your venue talk, but also kind of broadly. So how do they know if they should even bother sending you or venues like you a press kit? In other words, how do I know I'm the kind of thing you might be looking for? And then how do you go the other way too? how do I if I do know I'm a theater, I'm a theater show, baby. I've done it before. How do I find the right date? For me, the right match to who I'm looking for. Does that make sense? Kind of the two sides of the equation there. Are, are you talking about selling your show as a theater? Yes, and, specifically to you. And then if you can, kind of as you answer it, sort of, okay, so if, we, if someone watching right now is thinking, I'm a magician, I have a killer show, I fit right into your hand-hewn beams and your drinks and your speakeasy yes. and 18. So one, yeah. how do they get your attention? How do they know they belong there? Who are you looking for? And then... Um, reverse it how does someone like me i am a theater show how would you recommend that i pick my next theater target how do i decide you're not the venue for me yeah brilliant well i i think it goes back to what i just said earlier ultimately you have to have that ideal scenario in your mind and you're going to know if the place is right or not uh but if, if if somebody were to see the the show if if i had a member of the audience who happened to be a uh, an entertainer reach out to me i think first and foremost you've got to take action You've got to get up off your ass and approach the venue. That's how I did it. There's no question in my mind that you're not going to, first of all, something amazing will happen if you don't do anything, and that's nothing. Get up. Get up. Yeah. Go. You know, when, when I approached this venue, I, I did some research. Uh, I jumped online, and I was looking for the spaces. So I, I was researching uh, period uh inns and uh, uh, conference centers and I, I seen pictures and when I first went to the Donald Gordon Center I wanted to go into their parlor room but the bar wasn't in the parlor room they had to bring the cart over so we we went down to the pub and end up ended up on that right. but I I remember I remember walking in and uh, asking to speak with the event manager and uh, I explained who I was and what I was doing and I did this at three or four places uh, but You've got to get up, get off your ass and go. So if, if you're looking to book your show at my theater, I want you to reach out to me. Anybody that shows enough interest and passion to say, hey, listen, I don't know if you're looking at bringing in acts. I don't know if you're interested in partnering with this or if you'd like to see my show. Uh, but I, I think I have something. What, what do you think? Just speak up. Gotcha. Oh, yeah. Fair warning. It's a carny talking to a soldier. There's going to be foul language and neither of us are for children. So, no, we won't be watching our language. I'm sorry, it's YouTube. Um, uh, and th- there was a warning at the beginning you may have missed. Sorry. Uh, so this is the point I often make is that uh, very often, and I talked about this is the print thing that I did with, uh, if you go to wellattended.com slash blog, you get their podcast. Um, in print materials, I talk about I'll walk into places where there are no posters in the window and the place is designed. Like posters don't belong like this. This poster is going to look tacky in their boutique. Right. It's a very, uh, say, like a very feminine place. And I want to put a, a fire eater poster in there. It doesn't fit the motif at all. So I walk in with the attitude of, well, let's go get told. No, it's fine. I walk in and they go, oh, oh, no, it's fine. Put it right on the window there. No yeah. one's ever asked before. Ever. Right. There's yeah. a hotel system in Detroit that every year I do three or four shows there a year. Every year they ask me, know anybody else? You know anybody else? Anybody else right. tour? We'd love to. It's 150 yeah. bucks for a 300 seat room. You know anybody else? No, I don't. It's I was the only person to ask them. 
So yeah. a lot of times you'll walk into a venue and you're not getting the job because no one's asked. And it looks like, well, they don't do shows like that here. Well, guess why, dude? It's no one else swung on it. You know, and that's that's a thing. Absolutely. It is a thing. Uh, if, if you want something, you're going to go to all ends to make it happen. Uh, so ju just step up. And, you know, the, the next no is the next opportunity to at least approach somebody. And and whether they put your picture in the window or not, they're going to remember you coming in. And when one of their customers is in their shop and talking about the show that they saw, they're like, oh, yeah, that was that guy that wanted to put the picture in there. Maybe I'll check out his show. Yeah. And uh, yeah. Canoodle Marketing, my apologies. Uh, apparently, this person's daughter's in the room, and, and, and we're talking crudely. If that's you, we're not going to change our language. Sorry. But this will be on replay later. So you put the headphones on, you go for a walk, you're 100,000 miles from your kids. Um, it, sorry. Some of these are G and PG. I'm not. Don't bring your kids to my show ever. David picked a theater because of. So, yeah, different humans live in the world. Some don't have the same moral compass you do. Um, that's why I live in the city, because we're all mixed together. Uh, okay, so if it's just a matter of knocking on doors, right? So how are you able to, or do you have a metric for, I turn down theaters. There are some theaters I either won't yeah. approach, and some theaters I say, no, thank you. I try and say it as nice as possible, because, God, I'm flattered they would even consider asking. But I've had theaters, that, not for the money, it just, it didn't fit. It wasn't, now my, you probably have the same thing. I have sight lines. Some of my show takes place on the floor, like the Tesla coil. You really need to see my feet to understand what the Tesla coil is doing. And if you're a magician, yeah. there's certain angles. My understanding is where they'll they'll see the bunny hiding behind your jacket or whatever the thing is, right? So you and I have sightline issues that a hypnotist wouldn't have. You know, they you can be working. That's, that's it. So yeah. I've turned them down for sight lines. I've also turned them down because the aesthetic. A lot of bars, man. When you start actually filling up a small theater, meaning like 75 people, a lot of bars would love to have you come in on a Wednesday. Of course they would. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I'm like, no, yeah. we're in yeah, different businesses. Happening. We're in a different business entirely. You sell drinks, I sell tickets. So no, thank you. But, um, and and so I'm sorry. And so Mark's asking what kind of venues, theaters, theaters. I my show plays up to about 600 seats. So what are called small halls. Down to I played 35 seats when I started when I first started playing. Um, so theater venues. Um, and so mostly I would say black box and small halls, the terminology we use here in the States, I, I don't know if that holds for all in North America. Um, so what metric are, were you using before to find venues where your theater show would fit? Well, so I, I knew the show that I wanted and I'm, because it's an intimate close up parlor where people are immersed in that, I think even in the, the depth of the theater, when I, when I perform for 60 or more people, it's not the show that I want to give them. Um, so I, I just, I shit canned it. I, I don't want that. If, yeah. if I have to, if I have to yell to the back of the room or project my voice in such a way that, that the very far person can hear me, I'm going to make that happen. But if I don't want, uh, I don't want the 600, 700 seat theaters. I have performed them many times. But as I mature in who I am as a person, um, and that's not to say that I wouldn't do that again on a special occasion or by request, um, if it was a very specific, uh, if if there was a benefit to the person asking me to do it. Uh, but I, I. Right now, I want to control that, and I want no more than 50 people. I just, because in my mind, and this is where I different than other magicians possibly, is you and I are having an experience. Um, I, I love David Copperfield. I love Penn and Teller. I've got a great story about them. Um, but that's not... I don't want to sit and watch. I don't want to be passive. I want to be actively involved, and I would hope that my audience member wants that as well. So that's the metric I use. I know that uh, that I want to connect with a certain amount of people, and I can't do that or give them the attention time they deserve if if the room is tripled. I just, yeah, I yeah. go up to about 200 seats, and then my rule, if it's more than 200, I don't want to do a disservice to, to people right. Right? by selling yeah. too many and not being able to play that. So I have to have seen it because I have seen certain venues that are 400 seats, but they were built in a vaudeville style. So they're 400 yes. seats, but the nearest, the furthest you can be from center stage is like 18 feet away. That would, that would be so, incredible. Well, they're, yeah. they're made for people like Harry Houdini or, you know, someone to hold up a car. Jugglers, vaudeville performers that are made for people like me and people who didn't have microphones. Pre-microphone, the, the acoustics mattered. Now they don't. 
now you can just mic the place correctly and baffle it correctly, and you, you can actually overcome bad design with acoustics, with a technology design. Uh, Phil was asking, do we four-wall split ticket sales what? So, Phil, yes to all of it. He owns a venue. I'm performing at venues. Uh, it's a partnership. So let's say I call David up, and I, I'm, I'm pitching the show. Now, I tend to pitch that I'm going to four-wall it. I can either pay the theater money, and normally I'm looking to just rent a theater. I like that switch in dynamics. Now I'm his customer. So now I yes. can be the demanding a-hole, and he has to respond to me. That's um, it. I'm the boss. And then so I pay two or 300 bucks for the room for the night. Uh, that's about usually my budget because I'm selling so few tickets. Even a 300-seat theater, I'm only often going to sell 150 of the seats and block out the rest and say these, these aren't, you know, until I see the venue the first time. So I'm usually looking for smaller theaters. I then sell the tickets, easiest business model in the world. Subtract what I spent from what I made, and there's your profit. Now, if you start to leave the city, well, now I rent a car or own a car. I live in Chicago. Rent a vehicle, hotel, food, travel. But it's still a fourth grader could do my books. Um, it's not that hard to do. Uh, I consider that discussion, let's say I'm calling the Kingston Magic Theater, right? Um, if they want to buy me out, if they go, no, no, we can sell you. We got it. How much do you want? I want this amount of money. Done. Check. Well, now he's the boss. Now I'm serving. I mean, in theater, you sell. They're certainly like, and we're inviting all eight-year-olds. <laughs> Screw you. Um, but they'll have an idea of what they've bought in me, right? And who to market it to. More often than not, I'm either paying the money or doing like an 80-20, 60-40, 70-30 split. Um, and it depends on the conversation. I've even flipped it. So check this out, David. I've had a couple of theaters that called. Very little budget. They're calling up and they're like, hey, could you do a show? And I said, okay, what, what budget are we looking at here? Like 400 bucks. And I'm like, ugh, we're, we're way off. We're, I'm saying a million, you're saying a dollar. So we're not close to each other on what I expect to make and what you have. What if we flipped it? What if I just gave you 400 bucks and I'll sell the tickets? And they go, what? Yeah, because they're broke. Yeah. Let me just rent it. Yeah. And I've literally on the phone flipped it. Now I'm the boss. I go, let me just pay you $400. And then I'll sell the tickets <laughs> and I'll make the two grand that I wanted to make for the show, or I won't. My problem, yeah. not yours. Well, I think got, you know, coming from your perspective, that's a brilliant, brilliant opportunity for them because the theater would be dark otherwise. So for you to come in and say, listen, I'm going to fill your theater. I'm going to give you my reputation making show. I'm going to, or you're going not, to sell your, but if I played to three or, people, or not. I paid you 400 bucks to play for three people. Cause yeah, you were right to not invest in me. Turns out I can't sell any tickets in your town, but yeah, yeah. Yeah. And then I, I saw that could be a certain win-win uh, questions. Yeah, so again, what I'm doing in that relationship, though, is just trying to find a way to get us there. If you say you have a dollar and I want a million dollars, well, then the phone call's over. But if I can find a way to get us, if you say, if I say I want 2500 and you say we only have 2250 well, now we're haggling. We're so yes. close. We can do this. Throw in lunch, throw in a hotel. What is your, is your daughter hot? Like, work, work with me here, brother. Um, it, it, you know, if I say 2000 you expect 2000 that's an easy, that's an easy call also. Yeah, she almost know if it, does David own the theater or rents a space in a venue, and then the photos. And I noticed this too; it looks like a pop-up style venue that you've permanently established. Uh, yeah, th that's if you exactly own it, what it is. Lease or rent? Yeah, gr great question, Sean. Uh, so that space is uh, is on a lease. Uh, but it's a term lease, so I, I choose the dates that I want, and I work very closely with the uh, property owner. As a matter of fact, uh, very similar to uh, to yours, I'm assuming, mine is, uh, the building is owned by Queen's University. Okay. It's one of the most reputable universities in the country. They don't help with promotion. However, I've created a relationship with uh, the Donald Gordon Center, and now we're doing a little bit of stuff. I've got a link uh, to the venue where people can book a room or take advantage of other services that the venue offers. Um, at, and, and ultimately, they, they pitch my stuff on their socials as well. So when we banter back and forth across that, you know, they're, they're marketing me as much as I'm marketing them. But it is a, uh, it's a leased space that, uh, that I pay. I pay the bartender, I pay the room, I pay my own insurance. And that's a great way to start it, by the way, guys. So what he's done is taken a found space and turned it into a semi-permanent that could become a permanent theater under his branding, which means that if the Kingston Theater moves, I, the customer, move right with it. So if you do find a free building from the city or something, you could just open the Kingston Magic Theater Palace tomorrow and have the same customer base. You're not branded under someone else's. You're not the magic yeah. show at the Hilton. You're the Kingston Magic Theater in this other venue, which is just like Penn & Teller at the Sands. You know, you're in your own little theater in a casino. 
Uh, Phil Pareto I was talking to, uh, he does shows in hotels, and as do I. I pay the hotels very little money, 100 or 200 bucks a night. For these rooms they normally do, they get three grand for. But on the weekends, what I discovered is Friday, Saturday night, they're worth bupkis, not a nothing, zip, zip, zero. Nobody wants them. Now, theater brings in a, a desirable demographic. My average customer is 50 years old, white, and female. That's just who buys tickets to the theater. So if I see gender-specific names, not like Kim or Kelly, that could be a boy's name or a girl's name. No, I'm seeing Edith, Edna, Debbie, Kathy, Karen. That's what I see on the list. I don't see Jim, John, Stan, and Gary. I see Edith, two tickets. Now, Edith shows up with someone like me on her arm, but I'm assuming yeah. Edith was the decider there. So my Facebook ads don't target men. Not talking nope. to you. Yeah. But when you see my audience dripping with jewels, nice cars, these hotels want that demographic. So they are giving me basically the room for kind of covering their expenses, 100 bucks. To me, it was nothing. Phil Pareto, however, is getting two free rooms for the hotel for his talent doing stand-up comedy and a free venue so he's better at negotiating than i am i figured 100 bucks was pretty good he's getting them to set him up for the night because they see us as desirable as attractive add-ons for their customers so what you were talking about about putting their stuff i did this the 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 one of the hotels in detroit where i did a friday night the seance and you could only do it as dinner theater it was 75 bucks. It included a buffet-style thing. It included a drink. It included the show, Q&A afterwards. Saturday night was 30 bucks, and you just come see the show. And so we worked with them on that because the chef wanted to try and boost his food and beverage department sales, and that's what we do. I put 100 bucks in their pocket, and I put $2,000, more or less, in the cash register at the bar at a hotel. Yeah. They normally do 300 on a good night. Yeah. They think I'm a friggin' superstar. I get... Here's the thing, too. The manager knows I'm paying 100 bucks. None of the employees do. They think I'm dropping three grand on this room. I'm Mr. High Roller in a limousine. How am I making money? So they all show up, and they all show up to help. So I got four people there to help me check in people. I'm like, uh, I kind of do this by myself on my phone, guys, but thanks. Uh, you guys can hang out and watch the show if you want. They tear down. They help you carry stuff out. They think you're a VIP. So make sure when you find these spaces... You're looking at ways to offer bottle service. And William, you had a podcast that talked specific about that, about bottle service. It was a burlesque producer out of, I want to say, Tennessee, um, at, well attended. Um, so uh, bottle service, you talked about partnering with the venue. Include them in it and let them think of you as a billboard. I would pay $3,000 for a billboard. Yeah. Instead, this guy's going to pay me 50 bucks, 50 bucks for the room for the night. I made $3,050 off this deal, and every customer that comes in is my kind of customer. Now, if you got a punk rock audience, go to a punk rock bar. But if your customers look like me and David here, yeah, people want to sell me crap. I have a little bit, not right now, but when there's not a COVID going on, I have a little bit of extra money, and I'll spend it on brand new computer crap. So you got to always be thinking about that. Yeah, that was brilliant. And and you said a couple of things, but I just noticed Williams with us and I wanted to uh, I wanted to give him a shout out because for years I've listened to the all of the materials that you produced and released uh, in podcasts and writing. So uh, a big shout out to William at uh, at well attended. I appreciate that. Yeah, real Brandy. quick, let me mention that was while we're there. So a brief commercial, if you don't mind, no money has changed hands. William Rader runs well dot com. It's a ticket sales software. William also helped us promote the show. So if you're here, it's because William sent you here. So this is our returning the favor. Now, I will tell you that uh, money didn't go the money went the wrong way. I pay William. I use his service. And if he was in Canada, maybe one day you will. Um, you got to have some way to sell tickets and sell them online. People who buy tickets online in advance become advertisements for the show. Uh, yesterday, I had some woman named Karen. I don't want to give her last name. Bought a ticket, one ticket to the seance. One ticket. Then, not an hour later, I sold another ticket. Now, I'm not sure, but I'm about 90% sure they're going to come together. Because she bought a ticket, then was pot committed in poker. She's already invested, and she's like, oh, I'm going, you should come with me. I've already bought my ticket. Get your ticket. This thing sold out last year in Milwaukee. you got to get your ticket. They become advertisement for you, and it costs, they all cost about the same. What you're getting from Well Attended is William Rader is a magician. So, really helpful for the Kingston Magic Theater. But I'm a fire eater. We're not that different. What I do just doesn't involve deception, but it's still amazement. It's still visual entertainment. It works with burlesque performers and theater professionals. 
he and his partner write the code. So you've never in your life been able to pick up the phone and call any of these big companies and do feature requests or even be told why you can't get a feature in there. At least you get an answer. That's the reason to use it. It's plus minus a couple of pennies at all these different sites. So pick one that actually responds to what we do. And, you know, if nothing else, uh, at least have a look at it because I really appreciate him mass emailing everybody to bring you here because my mailing list, probably like yours, it's all just customers. They're just, yeah. they, they don't give a crap that we're talking. They're like, book a theater. I'm going to count it. I just came to see your show, Tom. I don't want to work for you. Yeah. That's it. That's really commercial. That's it. That's, that's the, there you go. <laughs> I hope uh, I hope that the very little bit I did brought people in. But on my on my Kingston magician Facebook page, I just put a blurb up and I said that I was excited to be sitting in your on your coattails and discussing this with you. Uh, but I, I made a very clear statement. You know, th this is a couple of guys who are talking about the business side of it, how to approach uh, and fill a, a venue. So as much as uh, as much as I hope everybody is here from from the Facebook page. Um, I was pretty clear in that. Let me, uh, let me, Mark Phillips, I'm going to get to your question, but before I lose my train of thought, I wanted to go back to the demographic and branding. You said it absolutely perfect. So let's talk about um, Kingston Magic Theater. In those three words, I think that uh, I have absolutely narrowed my SEO to 100% and I'm not a tech guru. I don't understand what people search for, but I will tell you right now, Google tells me that 378 people last month found my website because they were looking for theaters in Kingston. Well, no shit, Sherlock. I picked that name for a reason. I want the theater going audience. I want to be able to create that experience and gift them that uh, that moment exact the same as if they were going to the grand. You know, I, I that's my clientele. Those are the people that I want to continue to serve. Those are the people I want to share with. So theater was an absolute must in in the the name, uh, magic. It's what I do. I perform sleight of hand close up magic, and it's uh, it's parlor at best. Do I cut women in half and produce or vanish uh, Eiffel Towers or Not professional. statues of liberty? Not professional. No, that's Strictly it. Strictly yeah. on the amateur level. Strictly. Ab <laughs> absolutely. Um, but you know, so Kingston Magic Theater. Every time somebody searches for something in Kingston, bam, it's going to be it's going to be picked up. Uh, if they search for magic in Kingston, boom, it's going to come up. If they search for Kingston Theater, boom, it's going to come up. Uh, so I, I've worked really hard at that in terms of generic and organic SEO, but also on my marketing side from the Facebook perspective. If you get a promotion or a paid sponsor ad that pops up in your feed, um, hopefully because, bam, it's Kingston, bam, it's magic, it's theater, you're going to take a look at it. Nice. No, yeah. it's absolutely important. And in theater, I can tell you, um, have a good title for your show. Penn and Teller's first producer told them it wasn't their idea when he first brought them out to off Broadway from uh, the West Coast. And at that point, he'd gone from three to two. I literally just heard Teller telling the story the other day on a podcast on YouTube. Um, he was the one, this producer, who said, we're not going to say magic. The, the poster's going to be a drawing of the two of you. It's going to say Penn and Teller. Let them figure out what it is. Let them decide what it is. In theater, that can be very, that counterintuitive can be very important. Because if oh. you say burlesque, you're just a stripper, baby. There's no explaining to them it's, that you're not. You say magic, you're a kid's show. You say yeah. mime, you're purely for what, artsy fartsy people. You've got to be careful how you will get stereotyped. I say sideshow, I have no facial tattoos. I have no tattoos, period. I have no piercings. How am I sideshow? I'm in a suit and tie, the gentleman freak. So I named the show Freak Show and Tell. I look nothing like I should be in the sideshow. And yet, I am. So you've, you've got to make sure you have a compelling show title if you want to work theater. And then if you're opening a theater, Chicago Magic Lounge, Trickery, you know, that's yes. stuff. You always got to keep in mind branding, but it isn't always the so-and-so magic show. That can hurt you or help you depending on what you're looking for. But I will tell you, people are looking for magic shows. I promise you that. People think that, I think magicians tend to think magic is lame. I think the people who don't do magic, we think magic's actually quite cool. <clears throat> I have friends who don't want to be called a magician, and I'm like, they're, they're illusionists, I'm like that. Like, you know, illusions, Michael. Um, but no, seriously, dude, you're a magician. That's awesome. People, I will defend to my death the birthday party clown. Because if you're 11 years old and a clown shows up at your birthday, you are the coolest kid in school for a month. 
Yeah. It only looks lame to adults, and even then, it really doesn't. If you actually go see some of these performers, they'll suck you in. I mean, they, they, all of a sudden, it's all a, the grown-ups are watching the birthday party clown twist balloons too, and going, "Man, it's really good." Right? That it's amazing. Like, that looks like a that yeah. looks like a penguin. Holy crap! This guy's amazing. I respect that entirely. You know, when when Kingston Magic Theater presents, and that's how I produce it. It's Astonishment and Wonder. The name of my the, uh, two shows, Astonishment and Wonder. That's it. Not M Magic Show David Johnson, not Magic Show in Kingston. It's Kingston Magic Theater Presents Astonishment and Wonder. And my stand-up show that I also play is slightly off the wall. Neither one of them say Magic Show. Uh, yeah. But because it's produced, presented by Kingston Magic Theater, obviously people that are searching for a magic show are going to come to that. And anybody that wants to go see good theater yeah. is going to sh – who, who doesn't want to be astonished and full of wonder? Yeah, you know? If you want to know yeah. what we're considered in theater, fringe. We're considered fringe theater. So if you say vaudeville theater, a lot of the, the – Festivals may not know what you're talking about. We are true fringe theater. So puppetry's out there with us, mime, uh, really weird dance stuff. That's actually in the category with magic, hypnosis, juggling, sideshow, burlesque. That's fringe theater. So align yourself more with venues that would do that kind of stuff. And the, the Shakespeare theater, maybe not at first. Although, I'll tell you, some of them you can find space in an attic also. There's the occasional Thursday night where I've played in theaters where I'm like, really? I, I don't, you guys have a real serious mission statement. Like, this is a ballet and opera house, and you're like, we need money, man. Please come do a show. Like, we need 50 people to show up and do something. Eat fire, dude. We don't care. Yeah. Uh, hang on. Somebody's keeping the lights on. Right. Okay. Uh, question. Go. Uh, forgive, forgive me. I'm taking a quick look here, just just to make sure no, that Mark's I'm answering one. the question. No, Mark's got one. He says, uh, "Okay, so ticket sales are the dark. That's the dark art. Are you both dependent on your own followings for ticket sales? Anytime you open a show in a new venue, or you're a blank slate with no reviews? Oh, sorry, you you're a blank slate with no reviews. No, um, Mark. When I tour a city, when I break a city, um." The reviews will carry. Now, part of that's because I live in Chicago, and so it may be the Chicago. But I think, honestly, if I've even heard of your city, I wouldn't judge, oh, the Pittsburgh review said that. Like, it's Pittsburgh. I've heard of Pittsburgh. You know, the the Ontario review, yeah, I've heard of that. Toronto. Okay, well, Toronto's a big city, but, you know, London. Yeah, I've heard of London, Ontario. Um, if you're, like, in the Pacoima Inquirer, maybe you need a little bigger review. But uh, Yelp reviews help. Uh, and again, if you go to welltender.com slash blog, hit quit pushing yeah. on this. That's free, dude. That's free. Podcasts. Um, there's a guy who talks about TripAdvisor and, and do it. I think he's actually from the Burbs of Chicago. Talks about TripAdvisor. Talks about using Yelp. So there are the nice thing about theater and the thing I can guarantee your hotel. Oh, I forgot about this point, too. All right. One, every single newspaper, every rag doesn't matter what it is. That one only covers, like, say, it's uh, The Stranger, which is a Seattle-based homosexual newspaper. That's what they cover is that kind of stuff. Uh, here in Chicago, we've got uh, The Red Eye, right? Um, in New Orleans, we've got one down there, too. They're going to list me. Doesn't matter the show isn't, isn't uh, homosexual or performed by a gay man. They still list the theater. The New York Times will list the theater. Whether they like it or not, they list it. Even if they blast it in a review, they list it. I get ad space for free. Yeah. Number two. At the Hilton specifically, they went from one and a quarter stars on Yelp to almost four and a half stars on Yelp out of five in two weeks because we did shows each weekend. No yeah. one reviews a show without less than five stars. Everyone reviews a hotel room with one star. You only complain. So it tripled their ratings, which one lady does the reason I still do so many hotels. And she's like, that's worth 10 grand. If you just told me you could actually fix my Yelp reviews, I'll just pay you 10 grand and you can go away. Yeah. Um, so two things I can do for every single venue. So you've got entire organizations, dis like what I'm doing right now. Um, I need a guest to talk to about the program I'm bringing to you, right? So you have morning news, and we're visual entertainers. If you're talking about magicians, hypnotists, jugglers, burlesque performers, clowns, puppets, right? Um, I go on the morning news. I, and you can see it all over my website, too. Yes. Right? That website, and you can see me, the same shtick, too. How to eat fire. Here it is, the science behind fire eating. I've got my morning news shtick I write to include them and to allow for kind of an organic Q&A, but still with a script. All of that is how I sell tickets. And then I collect a mailing list. If you sign up for my mailing list right now, go to freakshow.tell.com. When you sign up for a mailing list, there's a cookbook right there. You'll get a free PDF copy of my cookbook. 
It's uh, Kiss the Fire Eater. It's a Spice Lovers cookbook. Uh, you'll get a PDF copy of that for free, and everyone at my shows knows that. So part of it is they get on the mailing list. Part of it's I bribe them to be on the mailing list. Then when I come back near them, they will drive. I did a show in Manhattan February 1st, I believe, of this year. I'm in Manhattan, three and a half blocks from the Empire State Building. Uh, a lady in line drove from the Poconos. And I'm not, I'm, I live in Chicago. I'm from, from Louisiana, from the Deep South originally. So I'm like, I don't, I'm sorry, I'm not local. They always assume I'm local. How far is that in hours? Four hours. She drove yeah. to Manhattan to see this show, yeah. hang out at a hotel, spend a lunch with a friend tomorrow and drive back home. People will invest. So you think like my mailing list an hour away from my venue isn't that useful. You'd be surprised the people who will drive because there ain't nothing like us. Uh, then, yeah, you build your own following. You use Facebook, you use Instagram, you use Twitter, you use LinkedIn, you use Pinterest. You make yeah. up a new one, I'll use it. If I go to Brazil, I use Orcut. You want to all go back to MySpace, I'll follow you there. <laughs> MySpace. I don't care. I don't yeah. care. <laughs> Tom, that's incredible. Uh, so when when you talk about those things, it that's that's exactly it. Am, am I right in understanding that um, that you're going into this or the question was posed in, a, in such a way that you don't have any of this? Is that... Am well, I right? Curious, I, just, I think like, OK, so if I live in Chicago and I yes. go to, you know, Kingston uh, and I'm, I'm paying you. So I've already paid you three hundred dollars. How the hell am I going to sell a ticket? Like, I don't have a following in Kingston. So how am I breaking that market? So that's that's so. Uh, so the specific question, are you both dependent on your own followings for ticket sales? Anytime you open a show in a new venue, you're a blank slate with no reviews, aren't you? Right. That's the question yeah. he's asking. Um, yep. And you answered it perfectly. I don't think there's anything I could add to that. I mean, you touched on everything. You touched on print ad. You touched on video, on morning television, uh, your existing socials. That, that's where it is, right? When you create that relationship with people, you can depend on them to kind of give you that boost in word of mouth. And, and it is about building a relationship. So another thing that you said here, um, and, and using those to your advantage, uh, from one of Williams' podcasts, I think it was uh, I think it was Bill Gladwell. Forgive me if I'm wrong, but you must go check this out. That's where I learned how to use TripAdvisor to my advantage, and I was going to leave that for the very end. But that is the biggest secret that I have learned that I've implemented because it's not a secret; it's out there. I'm telling you, everybody in the world knows that it's the large the world's largest travel site, and you go there to get reviews, but you also go there to give reviews. So I have very quickly moved to number two show in Kingston uh, in, in, in a ridiculously fast time. I sat at number three for a while and then boom, all of a sudden I was at number two and I'm hoping or I do believe that it would be number one if I didn't have to go dark um, because I create a relationship with those people. I know we're running out of time here, but I wanted to touch on the three things that you must do. You mentioned Penn and Teller earlier, and I said I was only going to talk about them once. The only time I got to experience their show live um, in, in, at the Rio uh, was on my 40th birthday. And I knew going into it that I was going to meet them at the end of the show. And as absolutely amazed as I was in that huge venue, uh, fixated on the effect that was happening on the stage, all I could think about was – there's an opportunity for me to meet these guys. I know they stand out in the hallway at the end of their show. I, I can't wait to do that. So, you know, $115 American for the ticket. I sat four rows back from the front of the stage. Wow, nice. The most memorable, the most memorable thing was talking to Penn and Teller as individuals outside the show. So I said to myself, why, why would I wait to do that? I welcome my guests to my own show. And sometimes my wife is incredible. God bless her. She has stuck with me through shit thick and thin. And she is a good woman. She's been my photographer. She's been my social media promotions manager. She's, you know, everything, everything. And for a long time, uh, she, she would come and help take, uh, take the tickets and make sure that people were checked in, welcome to the venue, invited to purchase a drink, and then uh, sent to their seats. Uh, here's a few. Okay, so Mark has a specific problem. Mark, so uh, so difficult. He's in Washington D.C. Says impossible yep. to listen to the Washington Post city paper. Um, and I'm not saying you're not right. You live there, absolutely. Um, have you asked him five times? And what I mean is maybe the first month you're doing a show because I ran into this. They don't take us seriously. 
until someone from the office sees the show and goes, no, dude, it, it, this, no, it's not a magic show. The guy's like a scientist or something. He describes how fire eating works on a molecular level. It's smart. It's funny. It's irreverent. It's like a stand-up comedian working in the genre. Now it's interesting. Now it sounds theatrical. So if you're a more traditional, like a magician like David, I would go, no, this isn't bunnies out of the hat, man. This dude's really funny. It's more like Harry Anderson or the amazing Jonathan. All you have to do is get enough where one person writes, bam. Yeah. I mean, I'm in Chicago. I had a two-page yeah. spread in the Sun-Times in 2013. Two full-color pages about me, and I'm nobody. And I did Man Cow TV. I did The Ellen Show. I did The Oprah Show. Like, all this stuff snowballs. So, one is don't quit banging that door. Two, drive two hours away, dude, rural Virginia. Now, you're the biggest show you've ever seen. Can you, yeah. can you rent a venue for a couple hundred bucks so you're risking 300 for a Saturday night and then go out the right. But number one on Yelp and TripAdvisor for what? Rabbit out of the hat kids show? That's what they're going to do to you. Someone from that venue will, from the paper will eventually come and they'll legitimize you by experiencing it, right? So they're not going to buy in on our marketing because they have a, it's a stereotype, it's a prejudice. And we're yeah. going to fight that. The same way every burlesque performer yells, I'm not a stripper at the top of her lungs every single day. They're not strippers. It's different. I'm not a magician. Science is not magic. Yeah. The iPhone is not made by wizards. Just because you don't understand it doesn't mean someone doesn't. Not real. And I fight that all the time. I know I look like a wizard. I get it. But I'm not. So we deal with that. Keep dealing with that. And yeah, man, go mad. Go an hour away. Go magic. Go an hour away. Go an hour away. Find the places. Because Chicago's expensive as shit, too. But Evanston's cheap as hell. Waukegan's cheap as hell. Rural Milwaukee's cheap as hell. And I don't have to get a hotel. Drive out there, do the gig, come back. Nobody shows up, 300 bucks. But keep, keep banging, keep banging, keep banging. Yeah. And then um, incentives for the audience to leave reviews. So, okay, so you want them to leave your review on TripAdvisor or on Yelp. What tricks, what pulls, what ideas do you use? I only have one. No, you, you, you fucking ask them. You look them <laughs> in the eyes. I, we have the same idea. Yeah, like you look, if you've created a connection and you just spent 75 minutes with these people blowing their minds, laughing together, being astonished together and amazed together, you tell them at the end, I couldn't possibly expect another thing from you. One of the one of the main reasons that I get to do what I love is because people just like you tell their friends how much they enjoyed themselves. If you would take two minutes to write a review, yeah. it'll feed my children and it'll help me do this tomorrow. And if you're selling yeah. tickets in advance, you've got their email address. So you use that yeah. email address oh. to ask them, hey, yeah, could yeah. you please, did you have a five-star experience? If not, I'd like to hear about it. And if you did, could you please tell TripAdvisor, Yelp, whatever you're using, Google, uh, follow me on Facebook, find me on Instagram. I found that a lot of people just sort of, I put one joke in my show where I talk about the show is weird. It's hard to describe. And I make a joke about you're going to have the same problem I have Monday, especially if you like the show. Yeah. And I talk about now you have my marketing problems. And so I make a joke about them, what they've seen. Like, how are you going to describe it? Yeah, you sound like you're an insane person who watched a slightly crazier person try and kill himself on stage for an hour and a half. And you loved it. Five stars. You get a laugh, but it also plants that seed in their head of like, oh, yeah, I did like it. Five stars. So maybe on the way home wherever they bought a ticket from, if they bought it through a partner site, like you're selling through Living Social or something like that, they'll hit that, but also Yelp, TripAdvisor, et cetera. Um, so okay, can, I talk, can I talk on that for a quick second? Please. Okay, That's what's, the only trick I've what's got. Absolutely so it's all amazing. you. Let's, let's think about this. If, if you're a true professional and you want to get better at every show, you're, <clears throat> two things are happening. First of all, you're taking notes on the car ride home from what you recall. The second thing is you're reviewing the footage that you've captured on video. And it's not so you can share it. I mean, sometimes you get great footage that's worthy to be shared, but you're going over it. So stop for a second, take a few still shots out of that video, slap it into the email that's already built in your autoresponder system if you're smart about it, and send out a show, last night was a true success because of you. That's the headline in, in, in the follow-up email that my, that my audience members get the next day. The pictures of themselves, picture of us together, points that I touched on. I even do a callback that starts at the beginning of the show. So it happens well after they've left the theater. And that's when I ask them if they've got a couple of minutes, I would love to hear their genuine thoughts about the program. I shoot for five stars. If it's anything less, 
please reach out to me personally and I'll do everything in my power to make it happen. I do a similar thing so, on Facebook. I'll put <clears> a couple of pictures of people who were on stage during the show with the seance. So yes. I just talk at the beginning, then leave it to Jonathan, who is a magician. He performs the bulk of the show for the seance. So I'm in the back with my phone. It's a theater. People usually don't even think. Now we ask them not to take pictures, but also it just doesn't happen in theater the way it would in a lot of other venues. Um, so I'm in the back taking photos just with a phone. I then post them into the event on Facebook and oh. say, hey, tag yourself if that's you. And I'll make a note of what their name. What's your name, Gary? Hey, I'm Jonathan. What's your name? John, I'm Jonathan. Would you do me a favor? Hold this. Hold this. Think of a dead relative, blah, blah, blah. I'll make a note real quick on a piece of paper, but I just, but it's David. He doesn't say David Johnson, KingstonMagicTheater.com. You know, uh, Bob Vance, Vance Refrigeration. He just says David. So I'll say David and Gary, great job, and I'll make a little reference to a joke Jonathan might have made, tying a dude up for your first time or whatever. Um, put their picture, and about four out of ten times, someone tags them so they can see it on Facebook, which now yeah. puts them into the loop of, would you like to like the page? So what we both have is a robust plan, Max Got Smart. So for your question, it would be like try every, try everything, try every tool in the box. But yeah, directly asking them in the worst thing in the world, if you do a longer than 20 minute show, because they like you. They, we have yeah, charisma, they, leverage. Yeah, yeah. You know. they, they've sat with you because they've invested. Not only have they invested in themselves, but they've invested in you. And once they like you and appreciate what you have to offer and what you've gifted them, they want their friends to experience that. So two points uh, for anybody that's paying attention, write that down because Tom, what you just said was absolute gold. There's no doubt about it. And one more thing I wanna offer is for anybody that's still with us, whether you're watching this live now or in a couple of days, if you shoot me an email at kingstonmagictheater at gmail.com, I will gladly send you verbatim the actual email I send out after the show to ask for the testimonial. Guys, I'm not, I'm not, it, it, it doesn't get any easier. That's worth a hundred bucks not, right there, for God's sake. That's, uh, that's crazy. I'm not yeah. trying to... I'm not trying to reinvent the wheel. Yeah. I'm trying to make I'm trying to make the ride smoother for myself. And if anybody that's stuck with us for the last 51 minutes gets anything out of this, it's fucking rip off everything that I've done. Take everything and run with it because ultimately as you take it, you're going to use it to become yours. Yeah. There's only there's only one David Johnson. There's only one Tom Britton. Right. There's only one you. But you're going to match and model everything that we've done to to create the the, the success as big or small as we have. Yeah. And use it. Just, that's what I said earlier. Get off your ass and do it. Two more points I want to talk about that I think the the aspiring theaters, so this is for those of you who are, who are asking us questions about how are you getting in these theaters? How are you selling these tickets? So two points, just, just from your original email, David. So one, uh, partnering with those that can help. And then uh, yeah. things that must be done at the show for building real relationships, if you wouldn't mind. And I can remind you, but yeah. go ahead and tell me. Um, so, and there's... God, there's a podcast on all these. Just download all the well-attended stuff and listen to them while you're on yeah. your walk or run every day. Um, so partnering with those that can help. So graphic artists, photographers, and other businesses. Other businesses, absolutely. But ultimately, I, I, I'm, I'm going to present the show. I have exactly what I want to give, and that's what I'm capable of doing. I could draw a picture or use a three-leaf sheet of paper and put something up on the telephone pole, but that's not, that's not what needs to be done. If I want that affluential 50-year-old um, woman in my theater, I've got to present to her an image that she is willing to invest in based on an, based on an image. It's so important to have proper gr graphics and branding stick with similar colors. So Jaybird Digital Arts, I'm gonna give two shout outs today. Uh, Jaybird, Jason Reese, Jaybird Digital Arts in Belleville, Ontario, Canada. Um, he, obviously he's a graphic designer, he works all over the world, search him out. Um, but I also wanted to, I wanted to give kudos and a shout out to, to Graham Reed, uh, Graham Amazing Reed. Uh, these guys know how to use graphic design in such a way that it sells this, the solution that you have in a single still image. So what do I do? I, I pay them what they're worth, but because I build a relationship with them and I, I, I build that, they want to help me as much as I want to help them. And that's when the relationship's built. You comp tickets. And I, guys, listen, I'm going to look at the camera. You do not give shit away for giving shit away. That's not going to build your business. You work with these companies and you help them so their customers can experience 
what you have to offer, and they're going to want to serve and support you too. Same. Uh, pro, uh, photos. Photos are very important. My wife has a digital SLR. I've got a power shot here. I've got a Nikon D33 up here. I'm looking at the webcam. Are we capable of taking these? Yes. Do I understand framing, frame rate, depth, focal distances? To a degree, but that's not, that's not what I am as a professional. It's very important that first of all, you tee up with these people, you share your vision with them, uh, you pay them, and, and you work with them. It's very important. When I talked about working with other businesses, I was very, very proud to have gone to a local pizza joint uh, here in our town, it's actually a franchise, uh, Gino's Pizza. He's got uh, like five or six locations. And so this, the plot thickens. Uh, the, lady, the lady that runs their social marketing is an on-air host at uh, a local and also national radio station. So this woman can give an interview. She can, much like Tom, she knows the questions to ask to keep that momentum up. Uh, and she helped me for 35 minutes on a live, on a social feed, live feed, present magic from the restaurant promoting both the pizza and Kingston Magic Theater. When you help other people get what they want, you will get everything that you need. I, I'm, I'm not um, stoic in that sense, yeah. but I think re reciprocity is a huge thing. I want to see you succeed. Let me help you. It, it, there's, it's amazing. It's truly amazing. It, people get excited. So there's a there's a venue here in town called Trickery, and it's it's a, a magician named Aaron doing just his show. Thursday, Friday, Saturday, Sunday, a couple shows a day, three on Saturday, right? Very 1940s, 50s business model here in the States. That's it. One show, much like yours, but he's open every day when there's not a quarantine. Um, he never has other performers except me because he didn't want other magicians, but it was we did a thing that was like magic versus science kind of kind of goof. So I did a Sunday night show because he only does a 2 p.m. So I said, I'll do 7 p.m. That's fine. It's a little like, uh, what, 25, 30 seat theater he's got. Very small and written for just his sort of parlor size show. But mine can play in that venue. As I went around and hung up my posters, because I do a whole three hour thing with William about print media where I cover all this kind of stuff. What I noticed is that the venue gets people excited. When you were doing burlesque, puppetry, mime, clowning, all these things like you're talking about magic, fire eating. The neighborhood gets into it a little bit. So I walked into one place with an art gallery. Hey, can I hang a picture yeah. up in your window? Is that what trickery is? And I go, no, ma'am. Yes. Normally it's a magic show. I'm not actually a magician, but what I do is, is it's amazing, but I can explain it. Sort of like landing on the moon. Um, oh, oh, so it's and so now I get to pitch basically trickery. Oh, no, it's a guy named Aaron. You should see a show. It's amazing. Cups and balls, classics of magic. Linking rings, staplers to the head. It's incredible. Really funny. Go see it. She's excited about the venue also. So it's like I'm drafting off of him being there. She showed up to the damn show. So I went back a few days later and gave her two comp tickets to come another weekend. And two weeks later, she came back to the show. Now, everyone who asked about that post, I was the only poster in her window, by the way. Remember, no one else is hanging up pieces of paper. You're all chasing social media and SEO like a bunch of lemmings off a cliff, all bidding on each other on, on Google. Meanwhile, I'm next door to you sleeping yeah. with your girlfriend putting up pieces of paper everywhere by myself nobody in the neighborhood what's that thing in the window what's the freak show thing oh my god i saw it twice my husband is going to go see it again with his friend you got to see it. now yeah. she's selling my show so a lot of it is drafting off so making partnerships with businesses is often very easy for us walk in there with a deck of cards make a thing vanish pull a rabbit out of your bum and, and leave make yeah. an impression you don't have to always yeah. be a douche who's performing for everybody, but if you can walk in there and talk about your show or do a little something, one-on-one -on -one even, a quick little thing, or teach them a metric they can do for their dry cleaning customers, you know, show them a little quick thing that you can give away, all that kind of nonsense goes a huge distance. Um, okay, now let's talk about, if you don't mind, because I think this is a very important one, that everyone I think watching can do this already, so you work what? You, you are probably some kind of performer, meaning uh, libraries, Birthday parties, trade shows, conventions, colleges, theaters, casinos. I think I've covered the general venues that we, maybe you're a busker, maybe you do rent fairs. What you are good at is building real relationships. So you, I called this follow-up, which I love that idea of a branding as your follow-up phase. Think about it as uh, pre-sales, tickets on sale, final week, show night, email afterwards, asking for reviews, and then 
follow up. So, David, what is what is your how do you follow up and how do you like to be followed up with? So I played your your theater on Friday, Monday morning. You want me to call you, page you, well, telegram? What do you like? No. Uh, so when you ask for reviews, at that point you've already established the relationship. So they they're going to do that. They want to do that. It's you have to reach out to them. You have to call them by name. You've established a personal relationship with. Three, three days down the road, four days down the road, you're going to put that post on uh, on your social media. You're going to create another email blast. You, you, Diane was the most incredible audience member that night. Yeah, yada, yada. When, when, when Tim opened his hand, it looked like he shit his pants. Like it truly. Right. So that the the follow up is maintaining that relationship ultimately they're going to go into a system there's Maybe a with funnel. your individual customers right so it's, it's yes it's, gotcha okay what if they're trying yeah. to maintain that relationship with as a theater owner so say if someone comes in to do a guest spot in your theater um so here here's the thing i i can tell people when i talk to theater owners and when i myself owned a theater booking you is great but the same problem Sean had he hung up 500 posters over a 3 day period uh, and they go away in a week, and that's not uncommon. Although, uh, usually in shop windows, they'll last longer. But yeah, on a telephone pole, I mean, instantaneously, they're gone. Sold one ticket off that with his discount coupon code. So he sold tickets elsewhere, but the paper thing didn't work for him. So um, I'll tell you that, well, one, A-B testing. You know, th this poster hanging here is version 17. The poster hanging there is version 25. Coca-Cola didn't test one kind of can. They tested a thousand kinds of cans and they settled on one can and they changed it every five years. You ain't got that kind of budget, but but do what you can. Don't give up on a system. If you told me you posted on Facebook once and no one came, do I need do I need to explain to you what you did wrong? You posted one picture on Facebook and only sold one ticket off of it. Yeah, that's not a plan. So your plan might have been good, bad week, bad weather. There's a million reasons shows fail. So it may not even be the system, but you may be right. Maybe paper doesn't work for you. Never hang up a poster again. Never never do that again might be the right answer. But let's determine that. One test is not a sample, right? Um, when you when you book a theater, and I literally had this in Green Bay. I've got to go to the very bottom of freakshotel.com. It says promotions. Click that link. Literally, how to promote a show is a Google Doc where I explain how to hang up a poster. That's for the college kids. I'm sending this. I'm sending that. I'm sending this. I'm sending that. I'm sending this. There's my promotions. Here's a Dropbox folder full of memes, square Instagram sized images. Some are already filled out for you. Some are not because I don't know your local humor. If it's this photo, this show's hotter than a Kingston barbecue. I've no idea what Kingston barbecue is. I don't live there. But the theater owner knows all the local humor. Hotter than the Molly's Palace because Molly's Palace burned down last month. I've never heard of it. He knows all those local jokes. I don't. So some are just like that. Others are. I've got one of me doing this. This tastes like chicken. So some I've already put stuff on videos. So I'm arming you to promote me through your feed because Kingston Magic Theater has a Facebook. What are they going to post? Well, I'm going to send them this. This conversation can't be finished. Res. You know, that whole thing. Um, it's it's the, the whole idea. Um, so, yeah, you've, you've got to do A-B testing on your posters, but also it might just be mismatch. Maybe you would do that a thousand times to get the same results. Don't think that, that your failure isn't actually indicative of just wrong venue. Move across town. Try again. Um, but also you may send me that poster and we sell a thousand tickets because it happens to be the right time of year, whatever. but make sure you're arming the person who's going to pay you. Right? So you say, okay, I, I want to charge you X dollars. Here's my video. Here's my Facebook. Here's my Instagram. And here's all the stuff you need to promote me. I have a 30 second commercial and a 15 second radio ad in case they want to buy one and put it on TV. Um, you can't have too much stuff because it costs you almost nothing to keep it stored on Dropbox. Well, if I could, you're you're obviously much more involved with the, the print material than I am. But there's a number of things that I do with the posters that are very important because I said earlier at the beginning of the conversation, my municipality and local government doesn't allow us to flyer. So it's creating relationships to getting those in the DBIA, the downtown businesses, the people that you've already partnered with in such a way that they wa they want to help you by putting your stuff up. It's not necessarily an A-B test for me, and I can only speak to my experience, but what I've also done is I've taken my full uh, 18 by uh, 20 poster, 
or my 11 by 20 poster, I've downscaled it so it's the exact same image that I'm using across my social media yeah. on the, the small flyer handout as well as the big one in the, in, the, uh, in the window of the shop and the same one that I give to the segment manager when I go in to do the morning show. So if I'm – everything is branded uniformly and Astonishment and Wonder has one image. And if you see it, uh, if you see it online and you see it in a storefront, there's going to be an association. That, if, if I could say anything, try sizes as well. Yeah, sizes matter. And then also sometimes, look, dude, I'm real good at hanging up posters. I performed for one person, too. I performed for three people. I, you know, it was raining. I actually opened a show. I forget holidays exist. I don't take them off. I opened a show Friday night in Chicago. It's St. Patrick's Day. Did you know there's a St. Patrick's Day in America? <laughs> Pff, never heard of it. Apparently, Friday, uh, last year, Super Bowl Sunday, Aaron, who owns Trickery, and I have never seen a football game. We had no idea. I did a show Sunday at 7 p.m. Super Bowl Sunday in America. Kickoff was at like 5.30 or 6. Great. Awesome. Had half a house. 20 people who, like me, <clears throat> didn't know what football was. Um, so I got a few dorks, you know. Uh, so, yeah, if you're opening your show the same weekend as the new Star Wars film in 1983... Yeah, you got competition. So it might just be sometimes that's just going to happen, and you can't blame the advertising. You can't blame yourself. Sometimes there's a thunderstorm, a power outage, or a brand-new coronavirus. And we all got to go inside for three months and hang out till it goes away. <laughs> Some of this is beyond our control. So you just got to keep slamming your head against the wall until you get enough confidence to feel in your gut. And you're like, I don't do posters. That Tom guy goes on and on about paper, man. It's a waste of money. I do three Facebook ads, and I fill up the room. Find what works for you, what works for your advertising, what works in your market, what works for your show. We may just be appealing to different people. My, my demographic is that 50-year-old woman. She likes pieces of paper and big, robust websites that she watches on a desktop. So, yeah, it's, it's yeah, exactly, Sean. Same problem, right? So you and me both, a couple of geeks. No idea. What's that? Super Bowl. Like, I haven't lived here my whole life. So, yeah, don't, don't kick yourself about it. It's, it's not a big deal. Uh, any last points you want to hit that we didn't? Finally, uh, no, I on the show partner with those. Yeah, I think uh, any last questions type them in now. Let me leave you. Uh, let me leave you on this note as a failure, <laughs> because that's what this is about. It's trial and error. It's getting out and doing it. So you just talked about selling, uh, you know, working for five people on Super Bowl Sunday. Yeah. Last season, when I closed Astonishment and Wonder, I was going into my uh, to my parlor stand up show, and Astonishment and Wonder played. 17 dates back to back, 90% sold out. So the last freaking day uh, was uh, Labor Day weekend, and I had Friday, Saturday, Sunday. Friday, Saturday, no problem at all. Sunday, I had 12 people in the house, and that's how I closed my show. I've never but sold a matinee in my life. Theaters will rent me for the weekend, meaning Friday, Saturday, and Sunday, and that's the package. It's 600 bucks, and this is saying you can do two shows Friday, Saturday, one show Sunday, and that's the deal. That's the only deal. That's the deal. Okay, fine. And I'll do the Sunday matinee knowing I'm performing for four people. I can be sold out, line out the door, sold out, line out the door. Sunday, <laughs> crickets, baby. It's me and a dozen people. I just learned to melt a dozen faces. I just learned to play with that energy <laughs> and deal with it yeah. and not, not be crying backstage because I was a failure. Like, my show just doesn't <laughs> sell on a Sunday matinee. That's fine. I knew it. But it is free money. Every ticket that walks in the door is pure profit because I'm not counting on that money. I've already paid for the theater. And sometimes those shows are very fun. They're looser. They're a little bit more kind of playful. If someone kind of uh, wants to talk, I don't have to shut them down necessarily or deal with any. I can actually just chat with them like it's a, like it's a classroom. So you're going to have to occasionally do that. It just kind of sucks. Uh, one last quick thing. Uh, Jonathan and I are doing a show you know, one day, three hours, 51 minutes and 23 seconds. This is a show. So you can tell your, your aunt Sally, uh, and the language won't be too bad. I'd say probably a PG, PG 13. Um, uh, that's us doing a variant of the seance. We're going to read a Houdini's, a magician among the spirits. Not all of it. It's like a billion pages. It's 4,000 pages on Kindle highlights, but then some of it, Jonathan's going to demonstrate. So for a lot of magicians, you've seen this stuff, but if your friend has never seen psychometry, like the, the spoon bending stuff that Uri Geller did back in the day, done well, even over YouTube, Jonathan, I saw it. So he did a Zoom show for a college. Terrible idea. But they wanted to pay him money, and he didn't want to say no. So he tested it by inviting some of his friends to come see the Zoom show. 
I, like him, thought this is never going to work, man. You, you, how am I supposed to pick a card? Or you, it's mentalism. It's all mentalism, too. Like, think of a number. What? Can you even see me? But I'm telling you, man, that psychometry thing on video works just fine. A couple other pieces he did with, like, selections and stuff blew people's minds. So this is more not for my wizard friends, more for your muggle friends. Uh, send them my way. It's free. I don't charge for any of this stuff. There's no donation uh, button or nothing. Come sit. It'll start 6 o'clock tomorrow night. That's Central American time. Uh, GMT minus 5 currently in Chicago. And we'll go until either we get bored, uh, we run out of stuff to say, or people quit watching. Uh, it'll be one to two hours of we've got a bullet points. won't be entirely improvised. We've got stuff planned for you to see. And then in between, we're going to talk about Houdini, all the frauds and fakes he dealt with, the possibility of, hey, maybe some people watching do believe in ghosts, and we'll, we'll talk to them. You meet people where they are, engage them where they are. Jonathan's going to show you some stuff that'll blow your mind. I'll tell you some stories. Um, I think that's it, man. Thank you so much for doing yeah. this. I really appreciate oh. it. This Tom, was, thank this you so much great. for having me. And it's yeah, nice it to see incredible. somebody else in vaudeville doing theater shows. Mm -hmm. If you're watching this and you fit between the two people you see in the box here, if you have a vaudeville show and you're not taken into a theater, I beg you, beg you to yes. try. Oh, uh, the, yeah. the, the link, uh, Phil, uh, I didn't put it on your sofa. So um, if you look at my, my Facebook page, you'll see my upcoming live events. You can set a reminder just like for this one. So just you'll see Freak Show and Tell right below this video, right about there. Um, click that, and there's only two. Well, this one, no longer live. One live upcoming event, and that's the seance. You can set a reminder and then save it out and all that kind of stuff. But tomorrow, 6 p.m. on YouTube, same bat time, same bat station. Um, I beg you to go to theater. So many times I go to fringe festivals, and I'm the only fringy thing there. It's a, a, what we call straight plays, meaning nothing like what we do, a play. Two guys, they're roommates, and it's not even like one saw a ghost. It's just like... Uh, the, the two guys have some drama and that's the one act and it's not bad don't get me wrong I do love theater that's why I write for theater but every single show that goes on the stage is the occasional stand up comedian working in a one man one woman show but that's it every single one that goes on the stage is the same until I come on stage and then no one comes after me and juggles or asks someone to pick a card or show, summons a dove uh, if you go to weplaywiththedead.com hit tour dates but honestly just click the link below just right below is the freak show and tell uh, YouTube, and then there's there's the live link right there. You, 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 it's it's I promise it's not hard to find. Just right below me, you'll you'll see the link. Uh, KingstonMagicTheater.com. Uh, one day we will all do shows again. Uh, just keep your keep your chin up. Um. Oh yeah, Pat. Uh, all this stuff I'll leave up until we. I usually replace it. So if David and I do this conversation again a year from now, I'll delete this one. <laughs> so it'll be the current one. But we'll leave all this kind of stuff up on YouTube to just kind of because. About 30-ish people watched us now. About 250 will watch in the next couple of weeks. Uh, anything in particular you want to talk about? Do you have anything you want to sell? Now's your chance, David. No, I just want to say thank you. <laughs> yeah, I want to say pleasure. thank you. Yeah, yeah, and if you happen to be in Kingston, look me up. Look me up. Email me. Absolutely. Yeah, please. Yeah, yeah, same thing. You come to Chicago, you let me know. We will do this. All right, thank you guys so much for watching. We appreciate you all. Thank you again, David. Thank you, William at Well Attended, for helping with this. I can't tell you how much this is. Uh, the boredom is getting to me. So having stuff like this to do, you guys watching us ramble for an hour and some minutes, it's a mitzvah for me as well, I promise you. Thank you, guys. Stay safe. Stay inside. Go play. Have fun. Bless you all.